One of the most recognizable reptile species here on Delmarva is the Maryland Terrapin, and we want them to be around for a long time. So we took a cruise near Assateague Island recently to see how their numbers are doing. We're heading out of the Sunset Marina on a picture-perfect Monday morning with members of the Maryland Coastal Bays program to conduct a survey. And our first stop will be around the community of Marsh Harbor across from the northern end of Assateague Island. We are looking for turtles, diamondback terrapin turtles, that uh, live in the marsh. They're the only brackish water turtle in the United States. And we're trying to see, uh, kind of get an idea of the uh, population uh, density in the coastal bays. So we've got a number of sites that we do these surveys on, and over time then we'll build up a, a database for where the turtles are and how many we see. This survey takes place once a year over a 12-day period in late May and early June when the terrapins become more active. And we'll be one of 21 teams around the region gathering data that will eventually be sent to the Maryland Department of Natural Resources. Um, we're doing just a one-way survey and because this canal is just like a small area, if we were to survey on our way back, we would be risking the chance of double counting the same terrapins that we've already seen and overestimating. Yeah, that's a stick, and I think that that one's a stick too because neither of them have moved or gone down. But there's a there's one right there, right in between. I got gotcha. you. Yep, good eye. Wow. I got the ripple. <laughs> yeah. Yes, these turtles are shy, and they're not sunning themselves on a log either. Nope, they're in the water. So we'll have to rely on the eagle eye of Carly Tulin. We know that it's a terrapin turtle when it's in brackish water because terrapins are the only brackish water turtle species. Um, it's very unlikely that it's going to be any other turtle species. But yeah, usually you can see the top of their head sticking out and it looks like a stick floating or some sort of vegetation. Um, but sometimes when they're really on the surface, you can see the tops of their shell and their tail sticking out, which is really cool to see. That's one right there for sure. Okay, so, so I think that that's a male juvenile. She can tell just by the size of the head if it's male or female. There's three, okay, so there's oh, I one, see two, them. three, yep. four, right there. Yeah, I see them, good good eye. And they're all just, you can see the tops of their shell, they're all just chilling. Hey Carly, how long did it take you to get your terrapin eye? I think I got it after a couple of surveys. <laughs> like I said, once you see a terrapin head, you're, you're pretty good at spotting them. I like to, it's kind of like a fun game for me, so I do it anytime we're out in the field doing something think there uh, needs to be some sand beaches or some, some uh, features that uh, would uh, concentrate turtles. But uh, as you see, there's no sand beaches here. It doesn't look like there would be uh, any good areas for nesting, but yet uh, they are here. Um, and probably this is a, uh, just a, uh, uh, you know, a rearing area, an area for uh, uh, a safe, uh, a safe area where there's a lot of food. We did two 15-minute surveys this morning and counted a total of 10 terrapins. If the terrapins are doing good, then we we have a good, good feeling that the rest of the uh, environment is doing well. And their numbers? They yeah. seem to be holding their own. We, we don't see any, um, really any upward or downward trends, kind of uh, 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 holding its, you know, holding steady, which is, um, good, I guess. Um, you know, it takes a while to, to uh, get a feeling for uh, how the, the, the turtles are doing. So, you know, we, we need really a, a long-term data set in order to look at that. The diamondback terrapin was once hunted to near extinction because of their sweet meat. But conservation efforts, such as the banning of commercial harvesting, have helped them rebound, although their numbers have never fully recovered. They are still considered near threatened in many areas and even endangered in Rhode Island. But as for Delmarva, Roman is cautiously optimistic. We're finding a good number of turtles and we're finding uh, turtles of uh, varying size classes. Uh, so it looks like there's uh, recruitment coming in. Uh, we're seeing nesting beaches, we're seeing turtles on the beaches. So um, uh, it seems to be holding its own uh, that they're, they're doing fairly well.